Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. Today we have our very first ever guest. We really wanted someone that is amazing and special and just, you know, would really take the first guest as like a real wow. But unfortunately they couldn't make it today. <laughs> we all knew that was coming, didn't we? So we've got my dad. Yay. We've got PewDiePie, as I affectionately call him. Oh, among PewDiePie. other names. <laughs> yeah. That's just the good names. How do you feel about coming on the podcast, being the first guest? Bit of pressure? A little bit of pressure, a little bit of uh, nerves going on here. The only time I've ever had a microphone in front of me is when I was singing before. But And Pete is actually such a good singer, isn't he? Is. he? Like he, is. he So the thing is, right, I remember this because you, your family love karaoke, not so much Sarah, but Emma and Pete love karaoke. And you were like... My dad always wins a karaoke contest and my sister Emma always comes second. Mm. And I was like, yeah, all right, always. We went to that caravan park and there was a big competition and there were some great singers. Your dad came first, your sister came second. Always. And it's literally like... It was like our child, when we talk about our childhood and we always go to caravans. Did you just burp on the mic? No, I just... No, <laughs> no I cleared my throat. Oh. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> he's like, Burr. all right. No, it's but gone. Yeah. No, it's gone. <laughs> he's going to a fart. <laughs> anyway, I was saying when we were younger, we'd go to <laughs> when we were younger, and we'd go to caravan holidays. That was it. it was like I've, maybe that's why we didn't fly because they didn't have car- they didn't have karaoke um, competitions abroad. But yeah, we used to we used to go. And that's the only way we got holidays i used to win them if you win them because you could go back and be in the yeah, finals but it was we? in september and cold and Let's very few people there and all the all the holiday shops were shut so yeah but it's still a good holiday it was it was and you, you sang at our wedding and it was unbelievable wasn't it the atmosphere in there oh it, i was so nervous that was the first and only time that i can honestly say i was so nervous why because, so funny. because it was so important to me it was so important that I did a good job. Um, you know, I was so revved up for such a good day. And it was, wasn't it? It was. So it was good. a beautiful day. When you finished singing, everyone, because when you were singing, we hadn't even eaten yet and everyone was like waving their napkins. And as soon as you finished, everyone was just chucking their napkins at you. It just, it was like. In a good way. <laughs> Super. Not like it's a like boom. Tom Jones oh, no, with his knickers. Was, yeah. It absolutely revved me. Like, you know, I was absolutely boosted. When... When you were throwing all the napkins, it was just absolutely joy. That's one of the highlights of the wedding day for me. So good. But yeah, I was going to say, we talk a lot on here about Sarah's uh, childhood and stuff like that. And it's it's quite nice to... You you and Roz have been mentioned quite a bit on this podcast. So I feel like people probably feel like they already know you a little bit. Uh, Well, I watched the podcast myself and, uh, and and I hear... Our names come out sometimes. Well, now you can defend cringe. yourself. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not as good at you as uh, as answering battle repartee. You? <laughs> You're pretty good. You're like Roz. You and Roz going at the, the repartee at each other. It's very funny. Although that's what mum said. The last episode you said about um, the clubs that you didn't get to go to because you were poor. Well, there was free ones and you didn't want to go to them. You never wanted to go to a club. You could have gone to brownies. You could have gone brownies. Yeah. yeah. You could have gone brownies. Yeah. What's worse than a girl guide in your pocket? Brownie in your pocket. A brownie in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, in your pocket. You make that one up. I'd like to say I did, but I've been holding on oh, to that one for years. Pocket. But yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, so let's do a little background background check. Check he's all right. No, let's talk about my dad's, um, his many job titles that he's had over the years. Like We always joke about dad's CV that it'd be like... Like a scroll. The trouble is, I th- I flitted around like a butterfly in jobs. Probably, it was it was actually quite a sad reason, if I'm being really honest. When I left school, I couldn't read or write that well, um, I, and I've only just realised that I'm quite majorly dyslexic. But I think I I went from job to job. Really, as a, I wanted to get as many qualifications as I could because I was embarrassed oh, uh, when you were know. young. I was very embarrassed. I always was dressed in my bus uniform. I was a bus driver at the at sort of, you know, when I was young. When you were young, I was a bus driver. And I used to be standing at your school and sort of collecting you or, or taking you to school. And I was always in my uniform and looking at other people and thinking, 
I bet they're accountants, solicitors, you know, and and I'm just a bus driver. And uh, and I think I learned a lot about reading and writing when I went to Nescott Plumbing College. Um, you know, I, I did the mm. plumbing college. And I learned a lot about reading and writing then, I suppose. Uh, so, you know, I got better at it. Every Tuesday it was uh, it was theory and you had to do all this writing about the bylaws and all the rules and and all the tools that you use to do the jobs. And it was like really difficult to start with. That first year was absolutely awful, but I had a brilliant tutor and that's what made me want to be a tutor. This guy called Bob Boyce, he wrote books on plumbing and he sussed out that I was struggling and he sort of really helped me and done a, a pre-read for me to read before I went and uh, always gave me encouragement and it made me want to be a teacher in some way and that's when I started becoming a teacher I, I became a driving instructor mm. and I've done so many jobs I've been a transport manager I've been an operations manager of transport firms but the training has run through like a thread mm. through my whole life I've always been a trainer that I go back to it you know, I, I become a manager in something and then I go back to it. I've got so many Yeah, I've always seen with you, like, it's like you kind of, you take on a, a new job or you get a new kind of um, qualification or something. And then it's like you always want to improve. You always want to keep moving forward yeah. and you want to do stuff. But also, like, even because... So you've done all those jobs, you said. Uh, you've also... You've, you were a chauffeur at one point. You... Or, but not butcher. even just butcher. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, a DJ, yeah, doing weddings, parties, and stuff like that. And then also, not even just in work, but in your actual personal life, because you volunteered. Like you became a voluntary policeman. Nine, and nine, nine years. I was a, a special constable. I, I you going to say something else. You're a special. I was going to say it was a special something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, yeah, and then you did um, first, first response. First responder. Um, well, that you was... even saved someone's life. Well, you've saved more than one person's life, but I mean, you got commended for saving someone's life. Yeah, I went up and met him after a, a year, and he had nine cardiac arrests, and I was first on scene, and uh, and this man was absolutely incredible. He was half the size. He was quite large when when this happened. But a year later, he'd been on a pilgrimage uh, back in Pakistan or somewhere. And um, he'd lost half of his weight where he'd been sort of living a, a, a better diet and life mm. and exercised. He, that man had nine cardiac arrests that day. Wow. And, uh, and, and we shocked him first four times and he... And uh, each time he actually came back and pushed me off of his chest. I was, I was doing CPR on him. And the first three times he pushed me off his chest. And then he went unconscious each time. But, but it brought him back. And a year later, he, it was a bit of a surprise. We, um, we were asked by our boss, to, me and my colleague, asked to just appear at um, the head office in Waterloo um because i was working for london ambulance at the time and uh and they opened this door and i thought i recognize that guy why do i recognize him and it was this chap Aww. and he ran out to us and kept calling us his angels Aww. and uh it was all in the papers and things mm. and which i don't know how it got in the papers it wasn't by me i didn't i didn't do it but yeah, there was you, a there you, was a you told me to write in and let them know about yeah. it <laughs> see if you could get a mention in the paper yeah. no it's incredible because i think one of the things i was going to say is it's not just in work. It's not like um, it was never come across like it's uh, chasing money because there's some of the things you, the most incredible things you've done is outside of any paid work, mm. like saving people's lives. And it's just, it's, I, I find it, in, I find it amazing. It, well, I did nine years with the police, mm. voluntary, um, Surrey police. Um, I really enjoyed that. But um, we, you know, we might get to talk about Mickey, but after Mickey passed away, I found myself not being that that true police officer. I was being a bit, I don't know, um, angry with people. And I thought, that's not me. And I went to a training session for 
first aid where you have to have your first aid at work refresh if you're a trainer because i used to teach first aid as well and uh and a guy said you're a blue light driver aren't you i went yeah he said are you still a police officer no i'm not um no i, I packed that up he said well london amulets are looking for this they do an absolute brilliant scheme called the emergency responder scheme absolute brilliant it's run by um like managers of of the ambulance uh service um but it's 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 operated by volunteers and it's pure volunteers you don't get any money for it and they give the time up and it's and they're all in the same color uniform so you the public out there wouldn't really know that they're they're voluntary and it doesn't matter anyway because they're trained to a very good degree mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, superb scheme, absolute superb scheme. I was very, very proud and, and I needed to be maybe doing something good for people rather than, you know, questioning people and yeah. arresting people. I didn't want to be that person anymore. I, I you know, I Makes found, sense. I found I wanted to be yeah. nice and, yeah. uh, and do sure. some good. Even though when Joel said he first met you and he was uh, a bit scared of you, what, and what he said is he realized that you're big softy. You are. You're uh, a nice person. Uh, Everyone well, that we, that meets you knows you and loves lovely, you. He's lovely, isn't he? He is. Big softy. But also, I think what would be good is while we've got you on the podcast, like, what was Sarah like as a kid? What? What, what happened in her childhood that made her the way she is? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got time for that today. Well, well, I used to teach martial arts and uh, I had my own clubs and all of my children, except one, so. Was uh, was in my class. Even even Roz, your mum, used to come along and train with us. So there's a whole family thing. So we've got Sarah now. I've spoke her into coming along, and she uh, she's at the front of the class because the beginners go at the front, and as you get sounds through embarrassing your belt, it already. I put them at the front. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was talking, and I was like the sensei, and I was said to her like stopped talking like and she carried on so i said right 10 press ups sarah she went no and she just shook her head no i went sarah 10 press ups now i've got my other instructor <laughs> me watching up. me i'm thinking i'm the, i'm the gaffer here get down to do 10 <laughs> press ups please 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 <laughs> please i didn't say please to her but i'm saying it in my head <laughs> and, and uh and she, and she went no no I went, sarah 10 press-ups now she went fuck you <laughs> <laughs> and i went outside and i made out to be really really cross oh. but i went outside and i absolutely peed my pants with laughter oh. i thought it was so good How old was and she? i never went back again no, first, you well, I'm not surprised. Your dad didn't want you back again. He did. Embarrassing. He, he wanted people with um, strength and courage like that. Spirit. <laughs> Spirit. Let me tell you. How old was she? Uh, how old were you about? It was before I met you, so I must. Have yeah, it was left. about twelve, thirteen. Feisty one. Yeah. Oh, well, she don't need martial arts, as no. you've just found out, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through life. Yeah. Sometimes I do blame her upbringing so, for the way so she was. So was I a bit like Chloe? Um. Yeah, well, I suppose you was. I wasn't in some naughty. Way. No, I wasn't naughty. I, and that obviously, like, I know obviously it wasn't right, but you I was, was obviously embarrassed. Cheeky. I was obviously was, very embarrassed about you was that. You very cheeky. You used to absolute get oh, you oh, no, when what? I'm telling you off. Oh, you was a sod. You'd 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 laugh and make me more cross with you. Yeah. And then you and Emma would just burst in. And, Laughter. Yeah, but the thing is that like, we'd be naughty, or whatever, and then you would tell us off for laughing, and then you would send the pair of us to sit on the stairs together. <laughs> so then we're in hysterics laughing with each other, and then we got in more trouble for laughing. And then all of a sudden, Emma would decide, like, snap, she's out of it, and she can now not laugh. And I'm still laughing the way I laugh, and she's now cross at me. So I've got you shouting at me, her shouting at me, like, all oh, tell me to stop laughing. And the more you're shouting at me, the more I'm laughing. That's when you bring in your mum. Yeah. And that's when all the laughter ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was. You wouldn't, you wouldn't play your mum up like that, would you? No. No. <laughs> no, she's, uh, your, your mother was very, very good with you all. Yeah. Really, really good. 
I know I, I say this because um, we always joke about like our childhood, of, but I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change, like, I am just the same mum as mum is. Because like, the thing is, right, and we've had this conversation, I can even see the look on your dad's face. Like, you've said this before, like, you almost feel, what's the word? You sometimes, you, it's like you feel embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. You feel embarrassed that you brought the kids up and you guys didn't have a lot of money. And I always say it, and you or, and Sarah mm. always says it, it's like she wouldn't change a thing. She I had really the best childhood it, and money was never an issue. It's made it me who all. I am today. Like genuinely, I feel... Oh, sorry, Joe. Yeah, so that's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> no, joke, but jokes aside, like, okay, like we didn't have money, but you was there when we had dinner every night, mm. even if you then went out and did a disco because you was a DJ in the evenings. Like you was around, like you... You just taught me that family is the most important and I, was I think that's the most valuable and lesson. I, I I always believed in family, but that was probably due to a, a sad, a lot of it was due to a sad time when we lost Anthony, our first, mm. uh, our first son. You, like, um, yeah, I don't think we've ever mentioned that, but yeah, you yeah. sadly lost two. two. Two boys, yeah. Um, Anthony... That was 36 years ago in June. We lost Sarah her. would have been, what, like one, one and a one. half? One. Oh, she was funny. She was so funny. Running around the hospital because um, I suppose I need to give you a little bit of background now. Um, Anthony had a, had a sudden infant death. And at the time, I, I didn't know first aid. So my mum told me, if there's any problem, you're five minutes in your car away from Kingston Hospital. So that was my training. It wasn't you know, blow in their face, pump on their chest or do that sort of thing like I, I know now. That's why I became a first aid trainer and I was passionate about first aid all through and I'm especially paediatric first aid. You know, I've done that for 30 mm. years and I do it for nothing. I go into like, you know, uh, family centres and children's centres and, and teach paediatric first aid for nothing and to the mm. family when they you ask do, it. yeah. But um, we rushed him down to hospital and he, he was resuscitated um by the hospital but he he was on a ventilator and uh you know it was awful awful life for us as a family but more for your mum you know she had this little baby that she treasured absolute treasured i'd come come down in the middle of the night because our toilet was downstairs she'd be sitting there in the dark cuddling anthony you know, she'd finished feeding him an hour ago, but yeah. she's still sitting down there cuddling him and feeding. And, uh, you know, he, he was a special little baby and a absolute adore. And, uh, you know, she had to go up the hospital, but she had a one-year-old little baby uh, because Anthony was a, uh, uh, it, it was a, he was a mistake, but he was an mm. absolute beautiful yeah. mistake. You know, I don't mean it in a horrible no. way. But... Your mum would go down the hospital in the morning and then have to come back and feed you and put you down for a little nap or whatever and then go back in the afternoon and she'd walk from New Malden to Kingston Hospital and then come back again and then walk down and come back again. Mm. She used to because like An walking. Anthony was on a ventilator for... Well, for the first two or three weeks he was on a ventilator and they struggled to get him off. But eventually they got him off and he went up to the ward. But he lived in a vegetative state for about seven months mm -hmm. before he passed away. But you used to be a little oik running around. Every nurse loved her. And she'd have three dummies stinging out of her mouth. <laughs> and you wonder why your little ones do it dummies. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you'd have three, three or four dummies all mm. hanging out your mouth. They all loved you and had you up on the counter. And was... I, I remember mum saying they actually thought I had diabetes because I was always wanting juice. Juice, yeah. And they tested me because they're like, oh, you're in hospital anyway. But then it worked out. I was just hiding my juice cups everywhere. Oh, so when yeah. I'm asking for more juice. <laughs> Hoarding the juice cup. Yeah. Oh, you, the you, juice cup. you were a little terror. But you, you owned the hospital. It was so funny. And all the nurses were like your guardians up there. You know, they all knew you. They knew us. They were so good to us, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. They were so good. But, um, yeah, so I suppose um, I, I, was, I was a bit embarrassed, but that's why I changed. 
and made sure that I was home. I wanted to get home to see my children in bed. After having that experience of Anthony, I wanted to be home for you. Mm. It didn't matter about money. I didn't care about money. I knew we, we didn't have enough. I used to be embarrassed about your trainers. All the other kids would have Nike and we'd have to go to shoe fair in, in New Malden and get you these cheap Nick trainers. I was so embarrassed, but I'd rather have that and be home in mm. the evening as a family. And I always ate in the evenings, or we did. And uh, Yeah, because I was uh, going to say that's one of the things that I really noticed. Because, like, I mean, I also come from a, a great family and a close family, but... Um, so there's a lot of similarities in my upbringing and Sarah's, but then there's also a lot of differences. And I think I was just really taken aback by how much you guys all did together and how close you were. And that even though you guys didn't have a lot of money, it just really didn't matter. No. And it just was not an issue at all. And like um, you guys just could have fun, whatever you were doing, you could have fun regardless of money. It didn't need to be at a theme park. It could no. just be going down the park or just anything like yeah. and like i just think um i think we've i think we've then taken a lot of those qualities and implied that in our family i Definitely. think like, i think you do um i i'm me and your mum are so proud of of you as a family um oh, i mean i think i think you know wh however you come across on this podcast I see the real Joel and the real Sarah, and you are very loving with each other. Yeah, because you did. You pulled us up. You said on some of the earlier episodes, you were like, "You guys went in a little bit hard on each other." But yeah. obviously, you know our banner. But obviously, some people don't. So it's like we can have a bit of a back and forth like that. Um, but then we're straight back to normal. And yeah. Dad, being and we Dad, have a heated debate. He doesn't want people. You don't want people talking mean about us. So you no. also don't want. Yeah, we have, we have calmed it down a I little want, bit. I didn't want him. I didn't want everybody to see that side because that's not you. Mm. You're actually very, very, very kind to each other, and um, you know, and I don't like Sarah being horrible to you. No, oh, I was going to say that. Like, yeah, scoot over next to me a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, this no, because I mean, uh, we're not going to be mean to each <laughs> when other. When I grew we're up, going to say it in love. When I grew up, but, I, I love my childhood, but maybe I don't like my adulthood now anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because when I grew up. When you I grew up, oh, I was daddy's girl. Could now I'm wrong. daddy's girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're and more of daddy's girl than her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She wears the trousers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now you're all, you're all really for Joel. You and mum. No, they're not if, for if me. I, they if I go they... away, you help Joel out. That, that other day when we, we were arguing, I said about Joel not helping me and you're all like, you and mum like, oh, but he's playing with the kids. And then I secretly found out that you did the two chores that I'd asked him to do. You did them anyway, but made out he did them. So yeah, which I, I really appreciated them doing the chores and making it look like I had done them because obviously that really saved me. But then I don't appreciate them telling you yeah. a couple of weeks later. No, but I that didn't. kind of defeats it, the that point, That wasn't right? me. That was your mum. Your mum my mom I, told me. Rosie's sitting, you the Rosie's sitting over there. She can't keep secrets snitched. from me. She can't snitched on me. No. No, but um, I, feel I like think what it is... To test on you now and just find out if you love me or Joel more. Oh, he loves you uh -oh. more. Of course he does. But I think what it is, it's not it's not about who, who they love more. Obviously they love you more. But I think it's just about who they maybe empathize with more. They're scared of me more. <laughs> Do you know what it is? No, sometimes Should you I just... tell you the true about that. I oh, know God. you'll always love me. My relationship with you is, no, is one no, million. To be fair, I think your two it, relationship needs more needs work, work than mine is yours. <laughs> We're pretty solid. No, there, there are, We're there good, is, mate. Don't worry about times, that. There are times like I, I've asked this whole thing of me saying how it is and then you'll leave and then Joel goes, you're a bit harsh today. I've, yeah. yeah. You know, it goes two times. ways. Hard I, with me. It goes two ways, doesn't it? Because you stick up for me, but sometimes I stick up for yes, you. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes it's behind closed doors. I'm like, you know... If because also I put I put myself in your shoes because I think well if Casey spoke to me like that I'd feel like it's a little bit cutting so I'm just Can't like you... you know what take it easy on you that take it easy on all I the men now, in your though. life I you do. know what it's like it's you biddle like... women you're all men haters no, it's joking. just jokes <laughs> it's just it's no it is but, jokes it but is jokes. do you know what I do appreciate your honesty and I'll give you an example here we used to be foster carers I think about sixteen years we did foster caring or something like that um your mum and after we lost mickey your mum had uh she'd said look 
you know, I need to end this now. And I, I didn't want to give it up at, at that time. Mm. And I remember me, you and Emma were out and we were going to the theatre and we had a coffee beforehand. And you absolutely sort of gave it to me, but it was because of that. And you said, Dad, you're being selfish. You've got to think of Mum, what she wants. And although I was absolutely twisted, I want to wring your neck at the time. Oh, I know that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're closer to high five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, I, I was so <laughs> about your advice. But that's the thing about myself. I know I'll go away and I'll always absorb that. And I think you're very similar to that. You know, you'll take the advice and you think about it. And, and we then stop fostering. But that was because of what you said and how you made me feel. And I appreciated it in the end. Mm. So you are very honest. And she very was right, though. Like, this is the thing. She's very good at sort of seeing clearly into situations and being like, even though this might be a tough decision, it's the right decision. And I think looking back, like, you guys won. were just, you were still broken. grieving was, and yeah. broken mm. after losing Mickey. So, you know, it was the right thing to do. But, yeah, sometimes. I think it was. Sometimes, yeah. annoyingly, yeah. Sarah's got to be the one to tell you tell you the right thing to do. But she? Had, had she not told me, I'd been going on and your mum was, I mean, your mum's sort of, she's very, she always bears my feelings at heart. And had I not wanted to give it up or, mm. I mean, it might have come to a point where she said, look, I've got to. But at that time she wouldn't have done. And she, how long would we have gone on with, with her having to do something that she really, really couldn't do anymore? Yeah. You know, or probably the same as, you know, if you, if you can't do a good job, you don't want to do it, do you? Mm. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe we'd have still been doing it for a while longer. Yeah. And her heart was broken. So to be looking it after was, yeah. other children other when children, she yeah. couldn't have her child, I totally, I totally got it. I think maybe that's where it was. It's like being a mum. I just knew I could always because when Mickey did pass away, that was my my way of dealing with it. In my head was if mum and dad can get up every morning, then I can, like. You know, we all lost we, we all lost somebody that day, but the I always thought like the relationship of a parent is harder than you know. I, I well, that's where I feel that grief you're very lonely in grief. Very, mm. very lonely. It's it's your journey. It's the way that you deal with it. It doesn't it doesn't differ in every person's heart whether it's your mum, your dad, your son, your daughter, whoever, your favourite aunt, mm. even your pet to a certain degree. Uh, I mean, yeah, I couldn't stand the thought of losing Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, grief is a, is, it's, it's a very lonely journey mm. because nobody can, nobody can live it for you. And you have, to, you have to live it your way. You have to go through the emotions. You know, the first... The first two years, actually, it made me physically ill. Um, I don't know whether you remember, but I actually was getting these real bad dizzy spells and I was almost falling over. Mm. Um, you know, but it is the grief. I always, I've got an analogy um, and I think it's like carrying a massive heavy rucksack on your back. Throughout life, that will never get lighter but hopefully you get stronger to, in order mm. to carry it. That is very, that's, yeah, really good way of putting so it. I, that's how I feel. I feel me and your mum, we've got stronger now. Mm. But you've, you've got to let these emotions, however it is. And, and me and your mum, because we had the loss of Anthony 36 years ago, we learnt, we learnt to support each other in a good way. If... In them days, like if I w had a, a down moment, your mum would leave me alone and let me. And sometimes it's not all of that about come up and uh, there, 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 you know, let me give you a cuddle. Oh, uh, you know, are you OK? Mm. Sometimes you have to just draw back and, and go and have a cry. Mm. And even to this day, I mean, I think uh, today's Friday, I think on Wednesday night, I went at three o'clock into the spare room and cried my eyes out. Mm. But 
that's what I do. You know, and I'm, I'm sure your mum does the same, but we don't smother each other. Mm. We give each other room. And I think that's a really important thing when you're, when you're grieving. And how long does grief last? Yeah. I mean. I think, um, so for people that obviously don't watch our YouTube, because we talk about Mickey a lot on our YouTube, don't we? Obviously, like, so sadly, 13 years ago, he had a motorbike accident, which is really sad, but also just angry because he'd only just got the bike that day. So it just feels so unfair. Yeah. Doesn't it? I think that's also part of it, feeling really unfair. But the yeah, thing I was... Yeah, because he can't... Oh, no, gone. so gone. No, I, well, I was just going to say, like, it, um, it took me on to thinking about, like, parent, like, that gut instinct. Like, you were driving home and I wasn't there, but Emma was there. And I remember her telling me, like, you just... There was blue lights. You couldn't see whether it was an ambulance, a police car, nothing. You knew nothing. But you pulled over and you just... I could be getting... Well, I went in the wrong direction. Behind us was blue lights. And I just had this cold feeling. And Emma was there. And uh, and she even said, Dad, it's just blue lights. Because I said, that's Mickey. And she went, Dad, it's just blue lights. It could be anybody. Mm. I, didn't you hear me? At, and I turned the vehicle around or we dropped our friend Sue off. And when we came up, we should have turned right to go home. But I turned left yeah. to, to go towards the two blue lights. And even when we got to the scene of the accident, we couldn't see any sign of Mickey or the motorbike because his motorbike was over the other side of the, over all of the emergency vehicles. And at the time I was a police officer for Surrey and it was Surrey police that were dealing with it. And I knew whoever it was, they, they had sadly passed away at that time by the way that the, all of the, uh, the emergency services were acting and, yeah. and parked the vehicles. And there was a car over on the right-hand side in, in this garden uh, or in this front of the uh, place. Uh, I think it was a clinic or something, and it was in the fr front. And, uh, and I'm screaming at the phone, Mickey, answer the phone, answer the phone. And I'm trying to ring him and it's just going to his answer phone. And of course he couldn't answer it. And, uh, and then we realized that he was underneath the car where he'd, where he'd sadly passed away under the car. What, how did you first realize it was Mickey that had the accident? Cause didn't you go, was it not his trainer that you saw? No, I think or? that was, so you ended up, you knew it was him. And I think you got taken actually into one of our friend's houses that didn't know yeah. it was my dad yeah. at the time. That was your friend's dad. And he, he was took so you kind. in, he... but then Emma went outside and called mum. Mum came and didn't mum and Emma. Well, Emma called your mum and said, at this time, she was still believing it wasn't Mickey. Mm. Because we had I think no she was time. more worried that you I was a little bit crazy. I was going, yeah. I was going, yeah, she's, yeah, she's I was going dad's acting like this, but we don't know anything. No, and, I'm, and I eventually asked this guy who took me in the house, um, is it a motorbike, mate? And he went, yeah. And so I'm now I'm sort mm. of freaking out. I'm thinking he's over the other side and I can't see him or whatever. And I don't want to see him. I, you know, do I, can I go past? And he took me in his house and I remember crawling up the stairs. I wanted to be sick in his lavatory sort of thing. And, uh, and I come down, I went out, I come back in, didn't know where to go. Um, and, and then this guy shouted at the police or someone shouted at the police, cry out loud, let this family know what's going on. And this police officer came over and said, I'm, look, I'm really sorry that, to tell you that it is mm -hmm. Michael. That's but it's, it's because he'd only just got that bike that day that his the insurance name wasn't hadn't, on, well, his insurance, on the it hadn't book. gone on the logbook. So gone through. So they couldn't, it yeah. took a while to figure it out, didn't it? I think. So they had to go over to the original owner and, uh, yeah, I mean, and we found out there and uh, and then somehow I got home. I think we were taken home in a police car and this police officer was so nice. Do you remember him? Mm. He was making tea for everybody and yeah. and stuff. Well, I don't really, I don't actually, re I just remember. Yeah. Oh, God, I just. <laughs> yeah, it, I just, it was just, re yeah, horrendous. I remember having, yeah, because I, so I just got home from the gym. So Sarah's at home. I just got home from the gym. And I remember, and, and this is so many strange things happened 
that day, like you, you instinctively knew that it was Mickey just from seeing the blue lights. Sarah had had a call from my dad while I was at the gym saying, I don't know what, I don't know what's about to oh, happen. Yeah. Something bad is about to happen in the family. I'm praying for everyone. Lock your doors. I don't know what it is. He was living in Spain at the time. He wasn't even in the country. Oh, in the middle and of it, a mountain as well. It wasn't even like, it was just insane. Just, yeah, like, where I think about. And I come home. Football, wasn't he? Yeah. And he I stopped. I came home and Sarah was like, oh, I've had this really strange call from your dad. He's saying that, you know, something bad's going to happen. Lock your doors. And he'd really scared you. And I was a bit annoyed. I was like, why would he do that? That's, yeah, because really he said strange. lock the doors. Was like, that's what's why is he, in my head. Yeah. Why has he scared you like that? Like, that's. And then I remember walking in the kitchen to get a drink and literally walked in the kitchen, got a phone call from Ryan, who's Sarah's sister's husband. And you came in. He just told me what happened. I came into you. And I just. The first thing I thought was my, the ch someone, because your dad said, lock the doors. In my head, it's you've gone out and there's something. I didn't even think of anything outside of the house at first. I could just see on your face. And I'm thinking. You were like, what? tell me what's happened, what? what's happened. And I, I, just could, I was trying to get the words out. It was mm. just like, I just said, it's, it's your brother. And he's had an accident and he's passed away. And I, I mean, it was, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling. Don't you start. Oh. Yeah. I need to get it here. No. So, <laughs> yeah. And then obviously it was, yeah. it was just. It was horrendous. The ever, you know, just the whole I remember, thing. Was I remember just you awful. telling me, and, it, and obviously that that hit hit me like out of shock, out of everywhere. Like it was horrendous. Then I remember crying, 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 and then Emma called me. So for a split second, I had hope that it was kind of wrong. Mm. But then when she then confirmed it, I broke down again. And then I remember you driving me to mum and dad's. And I remember getting out of the car and you'd parked up the road and I ran in front of you. And all I was doing was out loud saying, please don't be true, please don't be true, please don't be true. Getting home and then when I see my mum and dad, it like hit me for the third time. I remember feeling like a punch every time of like, no, this is actually like. But I've got to say, um, your mum and dad, they were superb to us as a family. We huddled around their house every day, and I needed that. You know, it was our house. I needed we that. Lived there. It, yeah, you. Really, <laughs> yeah. We were renting up. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was your yeah. mum and dad's. House, but your mum, yeah. your mum and dad would come and bring us food, and yeah, yeah. we kind of as they, a family. She cooked for us, didn't she? A lot. Our family, we. It was just we just yeah. knew if yeah. well if you got some sleep when you did wake up it was get up come. Come yeah. to ours, be together every day, every day, and it for two and weeks. I needed it was that. like that, wasn't it? Every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and uh, you know, I ju I just felt really sad for you kids, um, you know, and and for your mum, mm. you know, I just felt really deeply hurt for for you as as well as myself. Yeah. But I think we, but, yeah, we all did. I that. think that's the thing is everyone. I, we were all grieving, you know, Mickey losing Mickey, but we were also grieving for each other's grief. Mm. Yeah. Do you know, like Sarah was grieving for herself losing her brother, but she was also grieving for her mum and dad losing their son. Mm. And it was just like, it was just. But he was an amazing lad, wasn't he? Mm. From from pretty much the moment that I met your family, I quickly came to realise that Mickey was the golden child of the <laughs> family. He was the youngest, right? And oh my God, I've never seen anyone get away with more stuff than Mickey so the first time that I met Mickey, we, me and Sarah were in your front room. We were playing cards, right? We didn't have iPhones back then. <laughs> we're playing, playing cards, right? So Mickey comes in. He's what, 11, 12, 11, yeah, maybe even younger, like 10. Yeah, younger than that, yeah. Right? Keep it in mind, he'd never met me before. I'm a teenager, right? You think he'd have a, maybe a little bit of respect about him. He comes in. And he goes, I want to play with you guys. And Sarah's going, no, you can't play with us. I'm like, why are you being so mean to him? Like, he wants to come and play. Like, let him play. Like, don't let him play. Do She's it, like, don't trust do me, it. you're going to regret it. You <laughs> will regret it. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to regret playing a little bit of cards with the younger brother. So he goes, I've got a game. So I give him the cards. He literally launches them in the air. He goes, 52 card pickup and walks out the door. <laughs> I my jaw was on the floor, right? I was I like, just go, okay, off, off the sofa I Sarah get. Sarah gets off the sofa and starts giving up. I'm like, what? I'm like, Scooping don't get him back here to clean him up. She's like, 
no, no, it's fine. I'll just do it like a beaten housewife. <laughs> like just <laughs> this. And like that was kind of my, and that was my introduction into Mickey of like, that he was, was cheeky. You spoiled him like. You all spoiled Emily. him. There was no, there was no fight. I got, you all spoiled yeah. him. He was. I remember getting in really big trouble because it was a computer game and it was my turn. But because he wanted another go, we argued, but I got in trouble. <sighs> Even though it's so fair. Oh. So fair. And I remember walking to school once and my friend being like, Sarah, what's that red mark around your neck? I'm like, oh, Mickey strangled me in my school tie. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just another day. Oh, just, you know, just Mickey. <laughs> no, but he was, he was, he was cheeky, but he was funny and then he was like, lovable. Because as a, as a little kid, he was like short and chubby. And then he grew up to be really strong and really tall. Oh, like, God. yeah. So obviously we had Casey and Grace before he passed and, he used to be like, who wants to see mummy upside down? And they used to cheer. And I'd be like, no, no, Mickey, don't do it. He'd come and grab me and literally flip me upside down and shake me because he was so strong and heavy. Yeah. I was so skinny back then. He just, <laughs> like, it was just, well, yeah. yeah. He adored the He used girls. to do that to your mum as well, didn't he? Yeah, he used to <laughs> wrestle her to the floor. I mean, it was so funny. Um, but not long before his uh, accident, we always had these wrestling bouts and I always used to win I was always stronger than him I was the martial artist I was always stronger and the last year he used to get so strong and he used to get the better of me I used to have to hurt him or try <laughs> to, try and, to try and beat him but the very last one we started in the kitchen and I don't really remember the kitchen then you had the dining area and then when it ended up in the front room somehow I mean, I was absolutely exhausted I couldn't do it anymore. And he said, ha ha. And he had me pinned down and he was spat. Oh. And apparently your mum used to do it to him. Well, not apparently, she did. But what you do is you let it dribble out and he gets close to their face and you go and suck it back up. Oh, so gross. And, and he kept, don't you dare. I'm trying to be really serious. Don't you dare, Mickey. I'm really serious now. And he goes, <laughs> oh. No, the funniest thing is when um, you went away and you gave him your credit card for emergency <gasps> only. Oh my well, goodness. his emergency only was to take his girlfriend on a little weekend holiday <laughs> oh on your credit God. card. So he rings me up. I can't remember. Where, I think we were in Spain with you guys or mm. somewhere like that. And uh, he rings me up or we were in Greece, I think. But he rings me up and he said, Dad, you know that emergency credit card? It's in the safe. I mean, yeah, he said... I've got a crack in the windscreen in my car and I need to go to work. Can you um, can you let me have the credit card? I need a windscreen. Yeah, okay. And I gave him the code of the of the safe and he took me took the credit card just to literally buy this windscreen or replacement windscreen. So I didn't check the I didn't take the bill when it came in at the end of that month for some reason. But then the following month, I looked at the bill and I went, what the heck? It's like 700 and something pound. I went, it's expensive. Wood how on earth has it got 700? That's wrong. And then I looked and it's all in Cornwall and, <laughs> and, and all fuel and, and caravan park. And they had a great time. He had a great time. <laughs> and he but took my expense. car to boot. You know, the, the I, I think, it, you know, the Rax car that, that you uh, SOS for me. Yeah. Um, that's another story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But um, you, you got that. As that black uh, Mondeo car back for me, um, and uh, he loved that car, mm. and he and he took Kerry to the to the wherever it was to Cornwall, and uh, what did, did he, he say when the, you told did him? Did he get into trouble? Nah, no, not really. for probably about five seconds. Literally, nah. I remember he used to, I used to think, come on, someone's certain things about like, someone's going to tell him off for that. Come on. No, because the, no, the thing is, when we were growing up, dad would, his thing was that he would give you a talking of like life and. A dad lecture, give, yeah. yeah. Casey probably, and Grace know about dad, them. A proper dad lecture. Us girls knew just to like smile, smile and wave. wave. <laughs> like just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the more you do that, the quicker it ends. Mickey would not. He would argue back. He would say his piece. So they just go on, and we and even I can remember my mum just like just accept, just listen, just smile, just nod, like take it. So it just stops. <laughs> and he gave you advice towards the end, didn't he? He said, "What I do now is I look over Dad's shoulder, and I just look over his shoulder, and it, it makes it look as if he's I'm looking at him." <laughs> but what about what about your mum? 
like with him, right? This is typical of 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 how your mum treated him, right? So he would get a parking fine. So he'd bring it round, give it, put it on the table. She wouldn't tell me much about it. Mm-hmm. So she'd pay this parking fine, like 60 quid, whatever it is, okay? Not a word said. So she'd rather pay that rather than it escalate and it get to a problem. But that's not my point. So he comes round and he nicks something out of the fridge that was meant to be for her, you know, and takes some stuff out of the fridge. So now she's having a go at him and he went, hang on a minute, mum, you have a go at me about a fridge, taking something out of the fridge. Chocolate bar but, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yet you give me like, you know, umpteen times I've given you a parking ticket and you've just paid it. It don't make sense. Listen, don't you take don't, a, you don't, you don't, mess, take a, you don't mess with Ros and her chocolate. You, no, <laughs> no. Any woman that I know just don't take their chocolate. Oh, no. That's, that's worth a fight. He was very spoiled, but, you know. But I suppose as well that probably, well, I don't know, you can tell me, but maybe that played in part of losing Anthony before Mickey it and was, Mickey exactly coming that. and being. Mm. It I feel exactly. like it's even gone on to now because we've, well, obviously I don't remember Anthony, but you losing Anthony and us losing Mickey. I feel like now we've got that with then you... You've got such a great relationship with the grandchildren that I feel like they're, the gra- na- they're yeah. now that special. I was going to say, like, you know, I feel like, like I feel like y- you and Roz, like your grandchildren are your your world, your life. It's it gives you purpose. I mean, me mostly. Yeah, it's firstly God. me, and then it's the grandchildren. No, but like I've I don't think I've really, like ever really experienced like your mum and dad and the grandkids. It's You've... just the best relationship, isn't it? I love like the relationship that, like, Casey's relationship. I mean, all of them, but, like, say, Casey being the eldest, being a teenager, you know. No, because what's Normally, nice... you sort of lose touch a little bit of your grandparents when you become a teenager because you just want to be out doing whatever. Oh, my God, she absolutely loves you but guys. I think that's what it is, is because you love the kids, but Casey's got to an age where she's showing it back in her own way, of, like, oh, coming absolutely. to see you. She'll drive to your house. Absolutely. She's Take but all of your children, or... I, I always, I always think that their cuddles are real. Hmm. You know, it's not just a fake cuddle; it's a real cuddle. I feel that we are loved. Oh, you I are. mean more your ne- mum than. No. What about my bro. cuddles? What are they saying? Your cuddles you feel are those cuddles, your don't cuddles you? Are oh gosh, yeah, guys, can we cut guy. the bromance, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no you're, I do. I you're... think there's even like a little bit of a pressure that we, not a pressure, but as in like. We now just idolize the kids so much that we there's a fear in us, I think, that something could ever go wrong. Not like when Casey's rang, like my heart races when that phone like so yesterday my my phone rang from Casey and I knew she was on a boat. She told me she got a private boat for her and her friend. And my phone rang and it was her. Now Straight away, I knew there was something wrong. I was like, they're on a boat. Why should she call them on a boat? If she, if it was because it's beautiful, she'd be FaceTiming me. So my heart is now going. She's not replying to me. I'm ringing Joel. He's not replying. Casey FaceTimed me, and there was a problem. <laughs> she had a sea urchin stuck in she her She had trouble a sea urchin. So thankfully, it was only that. I know there's a problem because she only rings me if there is a problem. But straight away, I've gone, like, in my head, I'm in zero, I'm like zero to 100. I'm like, she's, a, so she's on a boat she's I don't, been kidnapped. Even though me. she, like, because the last time she called me is because she had food poisoning and she was crying and she was really ill. But even when she calls me, my mind doesn't go there. Like, I'm just uh, so oblivious to stuff like that that I'm just like, oh, Casey's calling. And it was just a No, I problem. knew it. Like, well, you know but, how... Uh, I mean, you know, you only know too well that experiences that we've been through as a family, it's been, mm. you know, and you've probably spoken about little Soph, you know, from time to time. Yeah. Um, but you know how I reacted to Sophie when she was born. I feel so guilty about the beginning of Sophie. The first two years, I drew back. I, you know, I honestly thought the something worst. could yeah. happen. Yeah. I thought something could happen. And I couldn't handle that in my mental capacity after losing two boys. This is only I, a couple of years after Mickey had passed away. It was, yeah. It was so close after after Mickey. And I, I needed to protect my, my own sanity because I just thought, can't handle it. Mm. You know, you do. You do handle these things. And and 
um, I think as parents of Sophie, you taught me a lot about how to accept things. Um, I remember you telling me about Sophie. I was stopping with my sister, wasn't I? You remember? Don't remember, no. And you said whatever it was about the diagnosis. And I started crying. And in the background, Joel said, look, you know, let's have some faith. Let's, let's, let's put it where it is. She'll be fine. And I thought, bloody hell, mm. you're right. And you've been right. She's like, but it, but I feel so guilty about no, her first two guilty. years. You know the way that I. But yeah, back. I mean, I could, I could see how it was affecting you, the thought of losing Sophie. I mean, because it, it was touch and go mm. for the first. Mm. Few, it was, it was all two, three years, and um, and you, I could, I could see it even in, I could see it in your face, and you almost would look at her with. These sad eyes, mm. as if That's what it's already happened. I remember yeah. once saying to you, "Please stop looking over your sad eyes." You'd come mm. in and because have, I can't. I, I was like, "I can't." No, but we no, we I had realized. to we had to draw a line in the sand and say, "Do you know what? We're gonna we she because she was given um, a short life expectancy by the doctor, and we just decided, you know what? We're that's his opinion. We aren't going to accept that. Mm. We're still going to have a vision for mm. Sophie and a vision for her future. Mm. And we're still, we're not going to now, because it almost felt like it, we could now just almost cut short her, yeah. Yeah. our vision of her life. Because when you look at your kids, you don't think, you th you, yeah, you forever. don't think they're not yeah. going to be here forever. So I, we were just like, that's mm. it. Like we have to make a decision that we still continue to believe for Sophie and we still have a vision for her future. Kind we like don't the way man stop manifesting, it. putting it out in the universe, yeah, saying yeah. what you want. It really was that, want, and that's what we and that's what we all that's what we all yeah. did, even on the and days it's when it's funny because um, when you we say about like that gut that gut feeling, mm. I remember we had a hospital appointment with her, and she had to be put to sleep to have like tubes and testing done. And I remember um, the nurse coming over and saying, "It's all done, and it's all gone through, and everything was fine." And I then got this anxiety feeling. I'd never had anxiety before that. I got this major anxiety feeling. I said, Joel, something's wrong. You're like, no, 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 the nurse has told us. I said, no, I can feel it in my heart. There's something wrong. Something's happening. You're like, no, and my mum and your mum had called to check in and you went and told them everything's fine. And I couldn't because I was like, I know there's not. And then the nurse came back over and was like, oh, can, um, the doctor's coming up to talk to you. And I said, that's not good, is it? And she, and she remember she said, no, like, cause she was a bit caught, caught, off, caught off guard. I think that the doctor was coming up and the doctor came and sat with us and said, Sophie's not breathing very well. She's like in a really bad way. And back then I was like, she used to do this thing where if she was so upset, she couldn't breathe very well. So I said, let me go down there. They're like, you can't. Cause because this was in, in the recovery ward yeah. where you normally you wouldn't go down there. They, like, they would bring in, them up the, once they've come around. You can't go in the recovery room. You can't, you're not allowed it in there. I was like, no, honestly, like if I can calm her down, you might find that she'll breathe better, please. Like, and I think they were so desperate, they let us go down. So we went into recovery and honestly, it was... Nothing could have just... prepared us for what we sent down a child who was, who, although she had had problems, she was a healthy child. She, what we were met with in the recovery room was a child that was hanging on for their life. Oh mm. my God. <sighs> <laughs> Didn't think I was going to cry. We... She looked like she was hanging on by a thread. I, we just couldn't she believe couldn't it. She couldn't even lift her eyes to even oh look God, at like, it. Oh, God, it was awful. Horrendous. It was so bad. And then, yeah, but... Don't you two she, cry. Yeah, she, no, but obviously, you know, she... <laughs> no, but, she no, did, but the reason I'm saying it... She ended up in ICU, but then she was fine. Yeah. But she just had a really bad reaction to... I mean, we don't even know... No one even knows what happened. Because it was yeah. basically... She was just having a camera down... Um, to check her her airways because she had like a floppy, floppy larynx. larynx. Yeah. So it was just a quite, it's a very routine thing. Um, she just couldn't. But she, yeah, she, she ended up in ice. She, was it she not was the so anaesthetic? Fragile. No, because she's don't, had that since she was been. Up she's had anaesthetic since, and it could have just been that they irritated her airways. I don't know what. And she was it, I so weak. She, I mean, she was a weak baby yeah. back then, so it could have just been like. But yeah. But yeah, but that that's that feeling of that just. But look how knowing. she is now. She she takes everything in her little stride and she she picks up on you and she says, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Like, 
She's uh, an incredibly strong. Where does she word it? She words girl. it in a in a way. I've got this. I got this. I got this. I can I do this. this. I, I can, can do, do this. this. Yeah. yeah. She's such a gorgeous little girl. She is, and I feel like we're you know we're out of the woods with her in terms of her her health. Her health is is amazing. Like there's no worries that we have with her. I mean, she has like severe developmental delay, but you know that you know what that's not life threatening. Yeah, even that's like that's, that's, she's, uh, yeah, yeah, she used to choke used to a lot. Choke. She used to have an unsafe swallow. Oh, that was. I mean, we will horrendous. eventually we will do a podcast episode and oh, go so into more details because people keep asking us to. To, and like I was to talking, about, I was talking about to get the box of tissues her the other out. day, and people didn't. <laughs> yeah. I was saying like how I obviously she had the tube in um, her feeding tube, and I learned to put it in because we were going on holiday, and they said we couldn't go, and I just felt so bad for Casey and Grace because obviously the, this this year anyway, of Sophie's first little life, I would been in and out of hospital taking it in turns, so family had kind of helped a lot of Casey and Grace, and I was like, no, we need this holiday. Um, you were so strong. So I, I, I learned to I, do it. I, d- I don't know how I did it. Putting the oh, tube incredible. into Held Sophie's nose was so traumatic mm. for her and for us. That well, the fact you learned to do that was just amazing. I used to wrap amazing. her, I remember, put her in between my legs and I'd literally hold my breath until I've got it in. And when I did it, I'd breathe. And then I'd feel sweaty and I'd be like, oh my <laughs> gosh. But it was... We, th- we thought you were incredible with that. Absolutely oh. incredible. Totally again, incredible. you just the things you do for your kids because I only I would I only did that for Casey and Grace. If it was a f- holiday for you and me and the ba- like, if we hadn't had Casey and Grace, I wouldn't have done it. But I just thought I can't let Casey and Grace miss out. I just couldn't. We've never even really. I don't know how much we've ever even spoke to Casey and Grace about how that period of time affected yeah. them or how much they remember about it or if. Well, they knew about that, the concerns or... Well, they, well Grace didn't because when we had that YouTube video and we mentioned about Grace, Sophie's life expenses, she, she cried. Because you just assume, yeah. you know, we don't... Also, you try and protect them from certain yeah, things. So, so we probably didn't share that we much. We didn't share remember. it, but then you think over time they must... You just, you don't know. Like, yeah. It wasn't a thought-out thing, obviously, like... Well, yeah. things yeah. when things are said, it... it it jumps out as being real sometimes, doesn't it? And it's a bit of a shock that you yeah. actually hear it now. You know, you know it yeah. sometimes, but but it, you know, um, I think I think I think your two girls are so adjusted and so so well brought up, both Casey and Grace. I don't feel that they are permanently scarred or affected by it all because of the way that they are they're such beautiful feeling girls aren't they they are they're good kids somehow i don't know how we managed that because we were like 18 when we had them how we managed that (laughs) we winged it genuinely though i really honestly think because of my upbringing of just thinking family and Hmm. because even i had Casey and grace before mickey passed family meant so much to us i think that and and also I grew up having to do chores and help around the house, and I've made the girls do that. I I think there's something about and being a team as a and family. And now I've been brought up since becoming an adult by Sarah to do yeah. chores around the house. But yeah, yeah. Oh, bless, absolute beautiful family you got, and good oh, family you, values. You too. Good family values. But... You too, but you're still not moving in with us. <sighs> There's an ongoing joke, which isn't a joke, about Roz and Pete moving in with us. And um, it's not a joke. I think your dad wants it more than your mum. Is it? Yeah? She's nodding. She's saying, yeah. Yeah, well. But it's more mum we would have than dad. Mum at least babysits. Yeah, but your dad's a a good handyman. Hold on, hold on. Your dad will hang a picture. Honey, honey, we need to talk. This one's for my dad. Oh, this is aimed at your dad? This is aimed at my dad. You get a little rest, babe. goodness. Right, don't mind me. I'll just be over here just enjoying a little break from so, being Don't you packed. start. No, so the conversation worry, we're going to have this is... Where you're going be, you're going to be outspoken and... Yeah. and uh, no, you know, you know this. I say it to you. So if I have a weekend away with Joel, quite regularly, you know. Yeah, you, too regular. No, it's not too regular. But and, and I ask you, if I just say about babysitting and you go, yeah, me and your mum would love to do it. I say, no, I'm not... I'm not asking you because you'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then mum does it on her own and you stay back with the dog. Because obviously you can't have the dog in the house because of Joel. You're like, no, no, I will help this time. I'm like, are you sure? Because I feel really bad leaving mum with all the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go. 
come back and you don't really help mum. That's so, not true, is it? Basically, what I'm saying is we want to book another weekend away. Can you promise that you will help? Quick, no, get a weekend you know what? in. <laughs> <laughs> I think your dad, I think it's almost like your dad offers it. Offers up your mum to babysit. <laughs> Don't worry, your mum will babysit. And I also think that your dad likes to have the house to himself. I don't know what he does there. Maybe he walks around naked. I'm not sure, right? I but... They leave the blinds open quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always driving past when I wonder why I get complaints from the neighbours. <laughs> but I feel, like you, I feel like you like to have the house to yourself sometimes. I think you're, you're, I think you're both wrong. Because I spend a lot of time around your house. Mom, oh, you do? When, but as soon as we're gone, yeah, you just leave Ross there no, by it's herself. Not true. The last time the last you went, time when you, you, did ha- when Sunday, you had a you little were... you had a little moan at me, a little pop at me. And doesn't sound like Sarah. God. Speaking her mind. Yeah, you you got quite No, what me. did I say? When when you said about me uh going home, um mum had all six children. Yeah, because you because uh, she had Emma Ryan's, Ryan's kids as well. As well. Yeah. I know, but uh, but th- that wasn't the point. The point was I needed to go home because we didn't have a dog sitter, and I stayed to about twelve o'clock that night. And she's up in bed with Sophie, and I don't. And I, you said about well, you could have slept on the couch. No, there wasn't the. Uh, it was. No, it there's something else. But I can't remember what it is. No. No, when about no. sleeping over? It was. It you was. Remember what it was? I don't know. Anyway, but she yeah. She ain't going to say because she wants to be quiet over there because she knows she's not going to stick up for me. Mum in the background over there. But anyway, yeah. One of the uh, um, funny yeah, stories. I, 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 I take it on board. Um, but if I haven't got a dog sitter, I do go back for the All dog. right, so basically what you're you saying You just want is a bit of a lunchtime, need, you and Buddy. When I need a babysitter, I've also got a sort of a dog sitter out. That can be sorted. No, okay. look, no, look, because he wants, he like, he wants to go home and be a no, buddy. No, 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 but what you're saying is you and mum will babysit for a weekend. Mum's like, what? And I'm going to get you a dog sitter because I can find the dog sitter easier than people for looking after my kids. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. I don't mind babysitting. I, I spent a lot of time and, and I gave your the, mum a lot of help. The last time you did, I agree. But that's not how you told me at the end of it. There was something because we had a little falling out, didn't we? Had a little bit of a uh, at each other. Yeah, but I can't remember what it was. was. It really annoying me because I know because I spent more time than I normally would want to. (laughs) Yeah, see, you guys love you guys love you guys love being come around our house, don't you? You guys come around all the time, and I think we've said before because we've had dilemmas sent in about oh my uh, mother-in-law and this and that. And I'm like, I can't relate. I was like, I get on so well with you guys. And I I love it when you guys come around. And you guys come around all the time. Sometimes too much. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but it's so nice. Yeah, it really is nice. Sometimes, you know, you're in your house too much. Yeah. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> no, because as soon as we leave, you go home for money. <laughs> 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 no, but it is. Not, it is. I think it is quite a special. Like, it, is, it seems it is. like it's probably more rare than it is common. But it's, it's also. It's us with your extended family. Because We're all just one big happy family, like the Brady Well, we've bunch. been on a been on a couple of cruises together as a whole mm. big sort of big group, haven't we? And we get on with your. Fa- I mean, I'm friends with your dad, and and like your mum is absolute treasure, and all your aunts and uncles are great, aren't they? They're all right. Which is why yeah, we can't no, all have great. Christmas together because there's way too many it's of us. There's way too many of us. Thanks for tuning in to Pete's podcast. Make sure you hit the <laughs> subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks very much for being our first guest. That and was guys, deep. that was deep today. It, it was a We've roller got, coaster um, of emotions. There was tears, there was laughter. And uh, yeah, wow, what a roller coaster. There was yawning from my mum. Yeah, Joke. she's asleep <laughs> on the sofa over there. Guys, we're here 6 p.m. every Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe, leave us a comment, a rating and a review would be incredible. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.